To speak on behalf of Oakland and the theme of risk today, we have Nick, also known as Nitros, who's visiting from Austria. He's spending time here in Oakland. Nitros was raised in a hunting family in Styria, Austria, and he was exposed to anatomy of animals at a really, really young age. And over time, he's developed a signature style which involves or includes dissections and cross-sections of humans and animals. He's probably one of the most sought-after street artists in the whole world. His murals are seen around here in Oakland and in walls all around the world. So without further ado, I want to welcome up on stage. Please give a really, really big hand. All the way from Austria, we have Nichos. Hi. Good morning, Oakland. It's pretty early for me, but I'm already hyped up on, on good coffee. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Xavier, for inviting me. That worked out really nicely. I was, I was planning to come out to, to the Bay um, for a while. Like, I'm coming here like every year, staying here, painting here, because I love it here. I want to show a little video first. <laughs> Um, I wanted to show this this particular video be, uh, because um, it's like a high-speed video of something that takes like five days. Of course, I've, I've been painting loads of classic graffiti for many, many years. Plus, uh, I've been I've been working on like this uh, little street icon, the the rabbit, uh, the white rabbit. I painted like I don't know thousands of them all over the planet. Um, this was a pretty old photo, actually, from 2005, I think. Still young, camouflage pants, for example. You don't really see it here, but... Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, uh, I've been painting, like, letter, classic letter graffiti since... 99, I think. 
or before um, uh, started with the Rabbit Eye Movement um, characters in 2005, because um, I was I was I was learning a lot about cartoons and then drawing a lot of cartoons, and I, this was like kind of my throw up, and it just. On some point in, in the place, especially in Austria, it just made more sense um, to get to get uh, little little characters out there, um, and it goes fast. Let's say like this is a period of like let the last six years, right? So before um, this is from 2010, so this is how my graffiti looked like six years ago. Um, so I painted like mostly green, <laughs> really like misfits horror letters. That was. It was fun. I, I included my characters into it. So, first of all, painting letters, painting like characters into it, and like creating a theme or something. And um, this is a freeway bridge somewhere in Austria. Um, yeah, I mean, it was fun. <laughs> it's always fun, I, and I think that's that what like really like kept me doing graffiti for such a long time. And I think I will never stop doing that. Also, like I still love painting letters a lot, and um, and I f still think this is very important, and it still keeps me motivated when I'm get really tired of painting big murals. So I have a couple of different ones. Yeah, this is also like six years ago, same time, little train in Switzerland. Back then, um, uh, also like tried to include um, my 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 characters. Uh, way more into the letters and like keep pushing the characters more into uh, as the letters actually um I was just thinking in the morning I was like damn I would wish to like make proper highlights on the lettering but this is, this is so old already um, um it's uh, it's also like you know you don't sometimes you don't really see what you're doing uh but it's fun and then I was like oh I, I was too lazy, or I mean, it was also like you don't have much much time on this. So instead of like painting him like skeleton feet, I gave him some converts. <laughs> you know, like stuff stuff like this. I think it's just, it's just it still makes me smile looking at old stuff. So yeah, um, and then it's just going bigger and bigger. This is one of the main main um, main roads in in Vienna, pretty much downtown. Um, yeah, things like this. So also in like a crazy like city like Vienna is is pretty controlled pretty clean and uh, we, I mean you can still still do stuff like this it's like you, you still have, you just have to find your ways around then <laughs> and like I've, I've been I've been pushing and painting um, this kind of stuff for like quite a while I haven't done anything else and really as painting graffiti especially in 2010 and 11. Um, this is another one from back home. Um, yeah, good times. That was before before um, people really knew how, who I was. Uh, like nobody knew my name or anything. It's like this is this is. Uh, I really back then. I really kept like there was no photos on Facebook of my face or anything. Nobody knew my name. Uh, so I mean, except of a couple of people, I guess. <laughs> um, this was also the time. Um, 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 I had like a couple of crews already before, and um, um, I, I joined the Weird Crew, which is like mainly a, a crew about like characters and illustrators who like paint big characters. But that was the time I got into uh, Lord's Crew, and uh, um, I had f friends in Austria. That they they been Lord's Crew for a while, and Lord's Crew is based mainly based here in the Bay, mainly here in Oakland, and. Uh, yeah, that's that's um, that just made the connection really early, and uh, many of them like really good friends by now, and almost like family, and uh, that makes make also makes it way more cool and easy, and and um, um, I feel way more home here just because of those people. Um, yeah, so it's just this just keeps going. Um, this is this is a a track site in in London, um, you know. Main, the main f things I've been doing, just with not like planning too much, I painted green or turquoise pieces with like skeleton, like the rabbit eye movement skeleton skulls as an O. I've been doing that quite a lot in, I don't know, Paris, Amsterdam, all over uh, Europe, pretty much. You know, getting painting out there, being being, being out there more, and and and, uh, and recognized by so many people. I um um I I. 
I don't know, I had really great opportunities to, to go to places and paint bigger, bigger characters and stuff. And I think, like, first talking about the risk being a graffiti writer, I think I want to actually talk about the risk, like, of painting really big murals. So what, what does it mean? Like, the thing is, you have to have some kind of, like, you have to practice really hard because you, like, you run out of energy. That's the thing. It's like, oh, yeah, this wall, I can paint it, there's no problem. And then, like, halfway through, you're like, oh, I can't do it anymore. So, <laughs> so I, I've, 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 seen, I've seen people really, like, like, they just threw their cans or their rollers away. It's like, I can't, I, I'm leaving. I'm, I can't, I'm running out of energy. And um, so you have to build, you know, like, it grows, it grows. And, and I think this is, uh, this is um, 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 a really, like, important point. And the next thing is you have to, you have to organize it really well. So you have to have a cherry picker, mostly if you go big, because oh, you're going to get up there, you're going to fly, you know, no jetpack, no nothing. So, um, um, yeah, and this is really hard. And sometimes, most of the time, for the big walls, you have to have uh, permission, of course, because they definitely aren't going to bust you on like a two days painting on the street. <laughs> So, um, 2013, I got to, from Detroit, I flew to San Francisco, and I didn't have any plan at that point, and uh, all my crew members were gone out of town, I didn't even know where I was staying at that point, um, and um, um, I think it was Comic Con in San Diego, so everyone left, I was like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I kind of like, I had five days here in, in San Francisco before going um, um, to LA, and I was like, uh, okay, we're just gonna. Me and Christian, we were like on our video tour for the deepest steps of the borough, which is my little documentary I came out last year, and we um, we didn't know what was going on, and we ran into the right people, and I left San Francisco with this amazing, huge tiger in the tenderloin. And that's like two and a half days painting and like two days organizing. So um, I was really lucky. We finished it and I drove to the airport. That was pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, so this, this was my very first experience here. And uh, I was like, OK, this place is kind of magic. And I feel like the Bay has, uh, for that kind of art I do, is, is, um, is just uh, a really good place. Because I feel like people really like appreciate that stuff I do way more as people in other places in America or in the world because it is a bit gory sometimes and like people take it a bit wrong in so many ways even if I don't mean it like that but um, yeah it happens of course so um, about painting big uh, and paint and talking about the lords um, last year um, we painted this big thing you don't really see it here because it's a very wide photo well, my, my crew members from the Lords are all like graffiti dudes, right? Like everyone, everyone paints letters, and it's a, it's my core, uh, my job uh, to paint, uh, like come up with a concept to speak, which makes sense, like from far away, and makes sense to like include my crew members. And um, um, Quake, also here today, Lord Quake, he came out from uh, from Oakland uh, to um, to Austria, and we. And our other crew members from Austria, we painted that big thing in like five days. And um, with this, it's also really hard. You have to like step away pretty far to like not lose perspective. And um, painting a, a Chinese dragon train looks like an Austrian usual train. Um, it's not. It's not that easy. But I mean, it's a lot of fun. But it's like. Um, well, it was a piece of work, and um, you can see here. It's like when you stand up close, it's like, well, what is going on here? Because every angle you go, it's like the the, the perspective of the train looks different. And um, so we were like heading out with um, with the cherry picker pretty far to that we actually could see what was going on if we do the, do it right. And five of us painted that in five days. And um, well, that's like you need some proper resources. So, I mean, five boom lifts and uh, loads of spray, loads of spray. 
Um, and um, yeah, accommodation, you know, like th this is in Linz, which is like four hours away from, from Vienna. And so people have to go there, have to fly there, have to uh, stay there, have to eat there. So it's, it's like, it takes a little bit of money, you know, <laughs> that's the thing. Um, but it's not impossible, that's the good thing. Yeah, and I guess uh, same I did a year, ex exactly a year before in Oakland. Easter Sunday, I finished this one after a week. <laughs> and then, and I'm, I'm kind of like that, you know, I just, I, I just get to the wall and like start painting and I paint and paint and then suddenly there's a week gone and I was like, hey, it's Easter Sunday. So I called it the dissection of the Easter rabbit. <laughs> well, this one was pretty intense in that case it is very big. And on that parking lot on, where is it? Webster and 14th, I think. Um, that parking lot is not very like wide, so you cannot really step back and say, like, oh, this looks right. So I had like three angles. I, I made sure I was standing like, from here to here, and then this part and that, and I had to like measure pretty much. It took me seven hours to sketch this thing up, like from th three different angles, and come down again, like with a, with a um, a scissor lift, especially not with a um, a boom lift. So it's even harder. But um, um, yeah, after a week, this one turned out really nice and. I mean, it was just like blasting it with the fat cap. So it was really funny. It was good. It's good. Good workout though. It is workout. <laughs> yeah, that one we saw already. That one, um, the polar bear is my biggest wall and my only big wall in Vienna. Yeah, it's like the place where I painted most and um, um, I did pretty much all my development. And I only have one wall there, so it kind of kind of shows how how hard it is to get murals down there. It's like, it's an endless act of organizing bullshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and also the, most of those buildings are very historical, so um, it's, not, it's not so easy. Yeah, it's getting easier, especially like, I'm, the good thing is I'm, I'm traveling so much and painting big walls um, all over the world. People back home see it and it's easier for me now to get stuff, but also, like Austria, we are Austrians are very slow people. We like we like to take our time. It's actually, in many ways, it's very similar to the Bay Area. <laughs> Maybe that's also why I like it here. <laughs> um, um, yeah, we, we, things don't go really fast. Like think this city doesn't like to develop too much. It's like very stressful. Um, so that's why, it's like organizing those things, I'm like, oh come on, let's, let's get a bit, get this done, you know. In six months, you know, and you don't, you still don't have that 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 um, permission for that thing, and then you're like, oh, we actually need another permission for the air, the airspace, what we're gonna use where the cherry picker drives and stuff like this. So th this this is thing what happens, you know. It's like weird things come up with um, with painting murals everywhere. So um, there's another thing I want to talk about, especially about um, risk. And um, this is a more like a, a technical thing. So we're painting for like such a long time now with spray paint. Um, I came up with my very fast and, you know, because when you're lazy, you find out like ways where you can paint fast, like and get to an, a point really fast, especially with the graffiti is pretty, pretty important to be fast. and. Uh, um, I had I found out some some technique or just also developed in time, but um, um, I've been been working on this and then and then it's just one, like technically it come one from one comes from one thing in the other, and uh, I've been working on like transparencies lately just to get a next step from the classic anatomy stuff dissection cross section stuff I've been doing. Um, so the last year when I was here. Um, I had a little break, and I was hanging with the crew a lot and painted a lot of fun graffiti. Um, and on my days when I was actually awake, 
Um, I, was, I was working on a whole new concept for my show in Switzerland. And um, I was sitting at my, my crew member's house in the garden and I was just like thinking and, and planning that whole transparency thing. And um, I was really happy to, to take my time here in the Bay and like, get this inspiration of this, this place I really like. And uh, um, I don't know, it, it really pushed me further. And when I get, got home, I had the energy to sit down in the studio for like two months straight and bang out 25 pieces, which is very hard for someone who likes to paint outside. Before I sat down in, uh, in in the bay, I was doing. I was already trying a lot with the spray before in in different countries. Um, this was already on my little journey last year. Um, this is in Belgium, the Tower of X-ray, I called it. So I was mainly working on skeletons, so I get the real bone structure. I was looking a lot of, of on, on on actual bones, how they look like, and um, and then I I I faded. The, the, out, uh, the outside shape of the animal on top. So the risk with it is if you, if you make anything, anything wrong with, with what, you, what you paint on top, like the outside, the x-ray, if you put too much blue in this case on it or the drawing of, of the outside shape of the horse, for example, is wrong, the stuff underneath, the whole skeleton is destroyed too. So there's not, not much space for mistakes. Because if you do one, you have to paint the skeleton again too. Especially, the, uh, mainly that part you already destroyed. So, so it's like, oh, I'm sweating every time. And I was like, this needs to be the right shape. <laughs> um, that one is another example. Um, that one is at, uh, here uh, in, in San Francisco at the um, Civic Center. Yeah, here it was, it was pretty easy with the fur and uh, with the legs. I was trying to do that red x-ray first time. And, um, and then I, like, when I started the x-ray, the red parts on the, the skeleton, the skull, I was like... <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's just it's just like I'm I wasn't really sure if this is like where I wanted to go with it actually. It really looked quite different um uh at the beginning and um um it was very risky. I wasn't I wasn't really sure if I'm going to leave it like that or not. And then I like uh, I I took my time and looked at it and I was like, okay, it's like we can I can leave it like that. Uh it looked a bit different on the canvas then because most most of the time the paintings I do on on uh walls I also paint on canvas but yeah this is this is uh, always the risky part if if that i mean you can like paint a rat's face in so many different ways and i wanted to have it a bit of different look so that's another one which i pretty much paint at the same time that's on uh howard and second on the temple club uh that turned out right how i wanted it that was really great maybe it was the size i just like to paint big yeah, here you, like there's a little close-up, you can see it better. So here you can see on the skull, I just paint the whole thing and then I paint uh, the x-ray on top. I think it, on this one it's very, very good to see. So there's not, there's no, no, no mistakes possible. Yeah, and then um, um, I came back to Europe and I tried to push this and I've never been really the, the guy who paints a lot of um, portraits, for example. Portraits is not really my thing like humans human faces is it's pretty hard i mean it it works but it if it i mean painting an x-ray on top that it, this person really looks like it you have to like kind of like measure everything first and um i came up with a plan i took a date time just to plan it out and uh with this one like you can still see the skeleton through like the process is i sketch her face up like how she looks then I paint uh, the skeleton on top and then paint uh, the, the x-ray on top again. Problem is you can't see what you painted first. Um, yeah, but this one was uh, pretty much uh, yeah, my favorite from, from uh, that translucent uh, thing. Yeah, and that, that one is, uh, that was from December in Miami. 
Um, here, this is um, very interesting because I was, I was, I'm, I'm constantly thinking further, like how, how do I push, like that, that glass effect the X-ray mostly has. How do we get rid of that? For example, this is only like a spray technique thing, and um, first I learn it with the spray, and then I do it, try to do it on the canvas again. So most of the people do it the other way, or they think I do it the other way, and. Um, I, I develop on the walls because that's where I'm most confident with. Like the spray paint is, is, is the thing that really kept me doing it for pretty much half of my life. Um, yeah, here you can see um, on, this, on those parts, this is still like the, the classic kind of like x-ray, like the kind of glass effect with those highlights on. But uh, on the other wing, for example, I already left uh, left out all that glass effect, and I found a, I found a way um, to have to have a see-through effect without like having that actual X-ray look. I want to talk about this thing. This is uh, yeah, my designed uh, spray can from Montana, and um, yeah, I also did that design uh, here in 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 the Bay uh, last last. Uh, two years ago, and uh, I've been I've been working with Montana for quite a while. I mean, uh, painting those very very colorful pieces takes a lot of spray and loads of different colors. And um, yeah, I think um, in 2010, where you know I showed you the first pieces, I I started to work with them, and uh, I think that crazy development was only really like possible because. They really supported me, and and you know I'm not the guys like I only need those it's like three of that color. I order like ten of each color, and, and then it, I end up with 700 cans standing at the wall. I'm like, hmm, why did I order so much? But um, uh, yeah, but um, there were never really like questions about that. So um, I'm very happy to have that support because that just you know gets me to do whatever I want to do. Yeah. Thank you.